Um, so, and then the next, the next one. This is a picture of U-Haul going down. Yeah, I mean that's. So my son is at camp, right? He's at uh, Tony Bennett's camp, mm -hmm. and I, I don't know if y'all know this. They had lunch at U-Haul, so they would they would have all the kids over at the at J JPJ, and then for lunch they take them across the street, and they would all have lunch over there. And uh, after I went to go see him play in the afternoon one time, and of course he said, he was like, Dad, did you play in JPJ? I was like, No, I played, I played over there. He's like, That old, that old place. <laughs> <laughs> that, that old place. I, I played so, at lunch. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> I, 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 and I, it's a funny story. I grabbed his arm because they were going over to listen to some speaker. They were going over to listen to some speaker, and I can't remember who it was. It was one of the coaches who was speaking for like a thirty minutes before they all went. So I grabbed him and I, I, I took him back over there. I told his coach I'll take him right back. I took him over there and we sat over there right in the main entrance. And I said, Justin, listen, man, I know it doesn't look like much to you now because they had to floor the blue, <laughs> the blue tarp over the thing in the middle. And it was still used for all the volleyball. It's still used for all the, the volleyball thing. Hey, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to break up a huddle. Uh, no but yeah, it was. Um, it's a. Um, I had to tell him. I had to explain to him. Like, hey, listen, man. Like, this is was the place to be. Oh, yeah. Like, you couldn't get a seat in here for the girls or the boys games. Like, you couldn't That's get right. a seat in here. Yeah. That's like, look, right. there aren't any real seats. They're just numbers, right? You have to find somewhere to get your seats in. Your mom used to sit right over there, right? right. Like, I, I gave him the whole spill. And he was like, so, so, so it's not just an old play. No. And you say it again, I'm going to push you down these steps. <laughs> so, so I really, I really, brought, him over with, I really brought him over there to threaten his life, right? I really brought him over there to threaten his life. But it was just so funny <laughs> that, uh, that he's looking at all these new stuff. And, of course, Ethan Saliba is still the trainer. And uh, I went over there and I complained to him. I was like, Ethan, come on, man. Like, what are they doing? And, he, and he, that's when he told me what they were going to do to it in another year. And I was like, come on, Ethan. They tearing down the place. They tearing it down. So it was a big right. deal, man. I yeah, love that place. Yeah. Uh, it became something different for me. I didn't realize what I was missing until I left, which is how it always goes with a lot of things. But right. man, I enjoyed. I enjoyed my time. I enjoyed I, my time there. I remember when you came back for the Herman Moore celebrity game. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That was man, incredible. Oh man, oh. we we played golf. Um, TW, TW worked, TW worked, he volunteered and worked yeah, that thing. I worked at oh, the, really? I worked at the share. It was my first ever job. I just turned 18. I worked at the Sheridan just so I could cover the Herman Moore game. Oh, really? Man, that listen. So in in my in my group, I had Chandler Franklin and O'Brien were the lawyers that were in our group. So it was myself, Barry Sanders, and Rod Woodson. Mm -hmm. So and none of us could really play golf, right? It was the most fun you could have being out there on the golf course that you could have, man. We had a great time. And, of course, they were legends and whatever, but they were just awesome, man, to be around in that part. And then, of course, to have Herman doing that part. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, that was fun. I mean, we're going to bring back, we're gonna bring back the, the celebrity alumni game at some point. And then this next one. This next one here, picture, Tony Bennett. Nobody does it better. Oh my God. I just don't understand. I mean, he looks like, a, he still looks like this, though. That's the key part about this. <laughs> maybe some smaller, maybe some bigger shoulders now than he does in this picture here. Jesus. So I remember, I remember you at the, I was at that same uh, that camp where, where you dropped your son off to with my nephew. But I remember you talking to him at the time about Zion Williamson. Oh my Do you God. remember that? Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I like me. It was like literally. I think it was me, you, and, and Coach <laughs> Bennett on the floor, and you, you were talking about Zion. What, what was your relationship with Zion at, at, at that time? I remember you said you said you had some relationship with him. I, 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 yes. So his his dad, his his stepdad, right, is from Great Falls, South Carolina, which is where my whole family is from. Mm -hmm. So one of our mutual, one of the counselors was talking to him, and he was like, you know, his people are from Great Falls, and of course. As y'all know, it's not it's not like Great Falls in some big metropolitan, right? So I went up there in the stands just to go say hello and to tell him that I'm originally my dad is from there and we go back there every year and blah blah blah. And he says, My son, my son is number 176. I can't remember what his number was. 
And then when I turned around and looked, and it's him. And I was like, that's your boy? He was like, yeah, <laughs> that's my boy. And so we're sitting up in the stands talking after one of the sessions. And Zion is sitting there. And of course, I knew who he was, kind of. But I wasn't, I hadn't seen him play yet. I hadn't seen him go into what I was noticing. And then when you saw us down there talking with Coach Bennett, it was more about what I, what I was seeing. Because he, he was MVP of that camp. What I was, I didn't notice what I was seeing at that point in time. And Coach Bennett was like, what do you think he can do in college basketball? What do you think he can do for us? I was like, Coach, I don't give a fuck where you can put him. You can put him anywhere. Look at him, Coach. <laughs> like, <he's> a, like <laughs> and of course, you know, you don't cuss at Coach Bennett. But it was just so... It was just so funny that uh, coach was like, ah, you know, I don't want to have to deal with all the stuff you got on the, you know, the side stuff. And then he was trying to basically explain to me that he has an entourage. Right. <laughs> it's my fault. <laughs> oh my God. So, but yeah, it was, it's, it's always good to have him because uh, Coach Bennett sees stuff so much differently than everybody else. Yeah, he does. Like, he, he just does. He just does. And he makes and he actually tries to make you feel good about it, which is weird too. Like it's oh. it's it's a slow form of graceful manipulation in agreeing with him as opposed to <laughs> you know, like, graceful manipulation. Like he like it, it's it's like it's like to me it's like everybody that's going vegan that tries to explain to you that these beans taste like hamburger. Like come on man. <laughs> so <laughs> like, like like I feel like Coach Bennett is trying to vegan his way through this whole conversation with me. Like he's really doing a great job of trying to make me feel good about my decision uh, of it, what I'm watching and what he's looking for for players and stuff. So, you know, it just it's it's always good to sit in any room with him and talk basketball. So, and ha- and how often does that happen when he when he took over at UVA? Did you did you hear from him at all? Or yes, the weirdest part about it all is the first time I met him down there. So I'm walking down. Because you know, I was I was in D.C. I can't I I think I was in D.C. when he got the job, and so I was a. My friend was a ball boy when he was with the Charlotte Hornets, so I got to sit behind the bench, at one of the games he was playing at. Because you know Larry Johnson was the guy back then for us, so all of us wanted to be around Larry at any level. So I got to sit behind the bench because the ball boy Derek Weber, is one of my best friends. He got us tickets, and we were able to sit behind the bench. And Coach Bennett was on that team, and I'm. I'm telling Coach Bennett this story, but this conversation between myself and him probably lasted 45 minutes. And I always thought that was, that was unbelievable for the head coach that doesn't right. really know you, that's, that's got time for you. And I know he, I mean, I know he knew who I was and all, but you don't, you don't need to give anybody 45 minutes to be graceful. Right. Like you don't, you don't. And he did, and he does it every time. Like, there hasn't been one time him and I had a conversation that he wasn't graceful, humble, congratulatory, or whatever you're doing, asking about my son, asking about my family, my wife, and all this other stuff. Like, man, like, he's just one of those guys that almost is unbel- it's almost not believable that he's actually like this. And then, you know, come to find out. And I'll give you another one. So when they lose to UNBC, right, and it's in Charlotte. So I'm able to get a bunch of tickets and it's a bunch of UVA alum and we, we're losing the game and I'm around a bunch of people that are, that are women. I don't want to go too far into it, but my wife and her friends, they're all UVA people and we're losing to UMBC by double digits. Like, but the, 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 the gut in me says we're going to come back. Everything in me says we're coming back. Until it's five minutes to go in the game, and you know UNBC can shoot the ball with their left hand, and it's going in, right? Everything they're shooting is going in, and it's falling apart, and some people start exiting their arena. So my the whole crew I'm with is gone. They walk out, and I'm the only one over there in our city <laughs> watching this, and I'm in my, everything in my heart is saying, "Man, this is not going to go over right." You know, the first phone call that came when I got up to the top was from Ralph Sampson, and I said to myself. How bad is this that Ralph is calling me? <laughs> like, I didn't understand what I was actually watching. I didn't understand how important it was. But when I got a chance to talk to Coach Bennett at the hotel, he told, he said, then, this is going to turn the program around, Junior. Watch. This is going to help us. This is going to help us in the long run. And I wanted to say, Coach, 
you know, like, you know, and you don't cuss around him too for the first thing. I couldn't say get the fuck out of here fast enough. Like, I couldn't <laughs> say it fast enough. Like, coach, like, there are people calling for your job. Ah, Junior, don't listen to that stuff. I'm not listening to a coach. I'm just saying. Like, you just lost to a TV station. You just lost to a, a TV station. Don't, like <laughs> A radio station. You know, like, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Like, right. But his overall, every kid that I've ever, that's talented enough to me should always think about coming to UVA based on him. Right. Like, I don't, like, I don't, I don't care right. what color he is. I don't get caught up in it. I don't care what style of basketball they play. Like none of that matters to me after having five or six conversations with him. And I've had with him, like he, he makes you feel like, one way or the other, like, and I've seen him get on kids, and, and, and I know y'all know he's not always, you know, I've seen him get on kids and pull kids out of games, whatever. I'm just talking about his overall belief in what he's doing. And he, he seems to get people to believe in it. And man, why wouldn't you want your kid to be involved with that? Mm, absolutely. Like, it's, de it's definitely not a sale. He's not selling anything. Nope. You know, he's as genuine he's, he's as they can. Thank you. And his wife is too. And they, and they yeah. just come from that. And I don't know how you make a bunch of people like that. Like, he's on the same list with with Mr. Graves. Like, how many people get on that list with Mr. Graves, Doug? Oh, that's like, it, it, ain't, it ain't very many people. It ain't very many people no, on the same many. list. Exactly. So. Exactly. That was awesome. That, that segue is perfectly I, I, I into learned, this. I, I mm. learned to quit questioning uh, Coach Bennett about five years ago. Yeah, I was going to ask you what you thought about this game, but you already answered that one. Oh, man. It's, it's like, I mean – you you lose games, but the thing about watching that game, like I never felt at one point in time that we didn't we overlooked them. Like that's the first thing they think about. Like when right. you're the number one overall seed, oh you you got beat because you overlooked them. No, UNBC showed up. Yo. They showed up, man. They man, showed. They up. didn't just they, win. They, they, right. they <laughs> right. And and by the way, because I know a lot of people stopped watching the games after that. Like they should have beat Kansas State. Like yeah. there was a couple of calls. Like they had their run in them. Like they had a chance to win that game as well until the until until this guy right here filed out. Like they were right into that game and Kansas State makes it to the, almost to the final four. They didn't make it to the final four. I can't remember. But yeah, that, that was a great that was a they, they they played their way out. It was a great yeah. game for them. And then this this next one. Oh yeah, see so. Like he, he believed that's a guy that's I mean, I don't even know if it was a monkey on his back. I don't know what that means, but like man, you you feel for him. Like you feel for somebody you really know. Like you could tell he was genuinely happy. And then you got to see the video of him in the locker room after. Yeah. Yeah. And how how humble he was. And oh man. So like he's yeah, he's at the top. He's at the top of the list of great people. And uh if I have a son good enough to play for him, I'd like to have him up there. Yeah, that's awesome. And then the actual championship. This is a picture. With That's OG, some of the crew right there. Some of the crew, OG White Some bone, of the crew, mainly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was gonna ask. You, I was gonna ask yeah. you, where were you? What was your What was your championship run experience? I, I, I mean, listen. So we just moved that weekend. So the weird part about it, they were in the middle of the tournament. I went down to the practice. So I'm there the day the day they leave to go down and play Wagner. I'm I'm down there with coach. You know, with my I'm just watching the practice because I had gone to a bunch of practices that year. Cause that's really what, what I have time for as a coach, you know, down here, you, you don't really have a lot of time for it. So we just talking strategy. Like I'm in the coaches meetings for the NCAA tournament, right? Like that's how much he just gives you access to him. And I'm just sitting there listening to what they're going to do against, you know, Wagner and stuff. So um, I just followed it from beginning to end. And of course, the way the first game started, you, it made everything else more special. Like Wagner just Absolutely. went out and did exactly what they were supposed to do. They came out, they ran their stuff, and it worked. Right. Yep. <laughs> like, you're already down 14. Here, here it is again. Here's a chance for you to fold yep. and again. Like, like, I mean, those are the kind of losses. If he would have lost that game, I guarantee you there would have probably been a call for his job. Like, I can't imagine the radio stations and everybody feeling the same way nationally about him as they do now. <laughs> because he no, lost, no because he lost as a, no right, chance. He lost two back-to-back -back number one seed games yeah. to a sixteen, and 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 in blowout fashion, like and all these wins he had accumulated, like he you know, And I do red. Oh man, like all he raced, all of the good deeds he raced, and of course the second half they just showed up and, and and did what they were supposed to do. 
but that says a lot about the kind of players you got on that team too, man. Like, I don't know Ty. I don't know Ty well. I don't know Kyle Guy and all those guys. I don't know, and I and that's on me. But I feel a certain way about them because I've seen kids fold. Yeah. In my career, I, as a former basketball player, you see the opponent fold. I've seen kids under similar circumstances, if not worse or better, not even that down, just give in to selfishness, give in to your own uh, stuff, and none of them did. They came right out. They continued. Do the thing. <laughs> they do the thing. You never saw anybody get down on themselves. That's the most important thing about that team I like. There were multiple times in this tournament they could have fell apart due to a mistake somewhere yeah. or something else, and you got multiple different kids making – making some of the best plays and as a coach like deandre hunter's corner three off a of ties pass off the same play being run twice and you found two different things to happen like those kind of things right there in the championship game and of course what kyle guy did at the very end of the, of the final four game for the three one side and to make the three free throws like unbelievable kia kia not giving the ball in the tie and looking down the court and throwing the ball to mama D. Like, all of those little small things, those are major plays <laughs> coming from different people who are focused in on uh, you know, trying to win games. It's awesome. All right. This, and then that takes right right into this next one. This is the team. This is before the, the, the rally in Charlottesville, but they they kneeling for justice for the teams. Right. I mean, all, it, it goes back to what kind of shows the character of the people that you're dealing with, it shows your coaching staff because a lot of coaches would stay away from this kind of stuff. I mean, to be honest with you, you just don't let your kids do it. You just, you know, you don't let them have the free thought, the free mind. I don't know how it all transpired, but you just try to stay away from this kind of stuff if you want to. Or you let your kids be who they really are and you show them that, you know, these are the opportunities for you to stand up for what you believe in. So That's good stuff. And then <laughs> last dance. Michael Jordan once said he wishes he came to Virginia to play with Ralph. To play with Ralph, huh? Yeah. That's it. He's quoted as saying that's, that's one of the schools that's he wanted, true. but Virginia didn't recruit him. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing about Duke not recruiting me. I mean, this all sounds good. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, it, sound, it sounds great, you know, but, I mean, like, like Mike, I mean, if you watch The Last Dance, I mean, there's, there's a lot of stuff missing from The Last Dance. Oh, yeah. You know, Definitely. I mean, that – that uh that makes Mike great, but you know, because Mike didn't go to sleep either. I don't know, you know, Mike didn't do a lot of sleeping either in that in the, that window right there. Either. So, uh, <laughs> so, but yeah, I, it was. I don't know if it would have changed the uh, the Virginia run. I'm I'm definitely thinking there was a chance of winning a national championship with somebody like him on the wing, along yeah. with Ralph. Who wouldn't okay. want to play with Ralph? I mean, he had three people on him. Yeah. I mean, I would have loved to play with somebody that also that had three people on him. Three or four, you know. I mean, that's the funniest part about the the NC the uh, NC State uh, documentary is how they looked at Ralph as the wall. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he was the man. <laughs> like we just won this game, but we got to play them again. Like, oh man, like so. I can only I can only imagine uh, what it was like playing against the big fella or playing with him. Well, I knew what it would be like to play with him. If he got three people on him, it's it's not easy. It's easy math for a guy like myself. So that's it's a lot of shots out there when you got three people on. Him. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> and then this this next one, this is more. We already talked about this, but right. I just want I just want to make the comparison that most people don't ever make nowadays. It's all fab. Took, I did everything. Sim- yeah, yeah, we took a similar picture. Yeah, that's we right. Took a similar picture. We took a similar picture to that one. It's um. I mean, we were all friends, AAU competitors, man. Like Jimmy King and I went on three visits together. So uh, Ray and uh, of course Ray and I played with each other in a couple of countries. So, and I'm still friends with Jawan. I talk to Jawan a couple of times a month now as a coach because he's recruiting so many kids. And um, you know, I've been to see you know see Web is just they're just all different and good at the same time. We all rooted for each other though. That's the difference I think between myself and well a bunch of guys back then. Like we were all just trying to make it a better place because we all come from some of the similar background. Right. You know, I saw so, Ray Jackson. So. so when they were playing UNC in the finals, I was cheering for Michigan like crazy. What about you? Well, we, we know we cheer for the ACC. Like, I mean, for me, it's all about our conference winning. Uh-huh. Right. 
Uh, but at the time, I mean, you just want your friends to play well. <laughs> right. You just want your friends to play well and then lose to your to Carolina. Like, you don't want to see somebody do something that you couldn't do. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, but you know, obviously, you wanted them to win and they played well. And then, you know, we're still mad because that year, I mean, we lost to Cincinnati. We would have had a chance to play that Carolina team if we'd have beat Cincinnati. Yeah. So, anyway, Van Exel and yeah, I mean, we had, a lead. we had we had a chance. Absolutely, you know, that's all you can ask for. We had a chance in New Jersey to win that game as well. So all of it kind of comes back to you because we're talking about it. But man, at that time, it was all about uh, one game at a time stuff. But you know, I'm, like I said, I'm 47 with a with a pretty good memory, and you know, you you always look back at those times as your fondest years. Thank <laughs> you. Doug, you fresh one of this one in here. I mean, it's the best group of all time. <laughs> this is a picture of Tennessee. <laughs> I mean, what else can you talk about? They're from Charlotte. The boys from Charlotte. Like, what else? That's your, that's your guys, though, right, June? Of course they are. I mean, I don't know which one you want me to talk about first. I mean, uh, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 all, that's also one of the perks, by the way, of making it to the NBA and being in the same places with some of your, uh, some of your peers age-wise. I think they're a little bit older than me. But um, man, they would when they threw parties and stuff like that, and uh, we were all we had all access, all access to Devonte and KC and nope. those guys. Now, now no, they no, were partying. No, no sleeping, no sleeping allowed. Definitely no not sleeping. sleeping with them. Now, for the record, they were partying just a little bit differently than myself. Like there were a couple of parts of the party where I kind of moved away from that they were doing, but the overall access to what they were doing was awesome. That's so cool. Yes. Favorite, was, favorite, you know, favorite, favorite Jodeci song? June, that's song. Uh, Forever My Lady would be... Nah, come and talk to me. Come and talk to me. Yes, yes. Thank yeah, you, June. Come and talk to me would probably be first, but... Thank you, June. You know, I'm a that's big fan. I, yeah. So, God, I, I've heard them in concert way too many times to pick one, but <laughs> if, I, if I had to pick one, it would be Come and Talk to Me because they, they yep. remix it a million times. So. And then, exactly. Last one for the picture series. <laughs> yeah, you and your I mean, old he, coach and Oak Hill. Listen, just talked to him two days ago. So uh, he he's um. I mean, I don't want to say he he changed he changed my whole thought process. So I guess that's a life changing experience. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't just about being good for high school. Like he already had a, he already saw stuff, and I know he saw it for a bunch of other people. But when you're up there and you see somebody every day, it's totally different. Like Oak Hill is a is a factory of like your mindset is different. You remember we only could talk on the phone for 15 minutes on Wednesday nights was my night. So there wasn't cell phones. There wasn't a whole bunch of stuff going on. So you actually had to be around your teammates and have actual relationships with everybody else. There was no clicks. You know, we stayed in the dorms with other. So he was, he was very influential. And what all about, the way up until the very end. What about uh, all of the, you know, superstars that have now come through Oak Hill. Is that, a, is that a, a fraternity of sorts for you that you feel a part of more than anything? Oh, absolutely. No, absolutely. Because I know he hasn't changed who he is. I know he's changed the way he coaches. I know he doesn't, like I heard he's cussed a couple of times here recently, these last few years and a couple of kids. But like for us, it's all the same because you're going to go through the same Oak Hill experience. Like you're going to want to leave. You're going to be depressed. You're going to be at, up there. There's, there's a lot of downtime even as you're traveling and doing all this other stuff. Like there's, you have to be at that campus, you have to be focused in and it's a family atmosphere. There's still Coach Smith and his wife, Miss Smith. Like she's really the, she's, she's the matriarch of everything. Like it's just an awesome situation to be a part of. Like there isn't anything bad that, uh, that happened up there. Everything was about growth and experience, man. It was an awesome opportunity and we're still tight. Like, come on, we're talking about 1991 and I still call him and text him and everything. And, um, and he returns all those text messages. Like he treats it like we're family. And he meant it when he said it. So, and Miss Smith and everybody and Stephanie and Sean, the whole family, man, they were all young and great at the time. And I know it helped me. And it's definitely helped me more coaching too than I thought it would because he's always been the mentor. You can always call on him. Some coaches don't call you back. You want a game. He got us into a couple of tournaments that we wouldn't have got in without his influence. So, so just cool. stuff like that. Oh man, he, you know, he does everything he can for you. So, and, um, Good guy. Uh, Great guy. Fresh. Dagger Fresh has a question for you. Yeah, June. We do this every every um, every podcast. We have my segment, 
and it's it's your own criteria. Yes. No pressure either way. Whoever you like the most thought was the best player. Mount Rushmore of Virginia basketball. 